the kind of thing people assume is if you develop an AGI, that open AI, if they're the ones that do it, for example, they're going to win. But mm -hmm. you're saying, no, they're, everybody loses. Yeah, it's gonna get better and better and better, and then kaboom, we all lose. That's what's gonna happen. When lose and win are defined on a metric of basically quality of life for human civilization and for Sam Altman. <laughs> I, I, Both. I, I, to be, be blunt, my personal guess, you know, and people can quibble with this, is that we're just gonna, there won't be any humans. That's it, that's what I mean by lose. You know, if you we we can see in history once you have some species or some group of people who aren't needed anymore, it doesn't usually work out so well for them, right? Yeah, there were a lot of horses for that were used for traffic in Boston, and then the car got invented, and most of them got yeah. Well, <laughs> we don't need to go there. And uh, if you look at um, humans, you know. Right now, we. Why did the labor movement succeed? And after the industrial revolution, because it was needed. Mm -hmm. Even though we had a lot of Molochs and there was child labor and so on, you know, the company still needed to have workers, and that's why strikes had power and so on. If we get to the point where most humans aren't needed anymore, I think it's like, it's quite naive to think that they're going to still be treated well. You know, we say that, yeah, yeah, um, everybody's equal and the, the government will always, we always protect them. But if you look in practice, groups that are very disenfranchised and don't have any actual power usually get screwed. And uh, now in, in, in the beginning, so industrial revolution, we automated away muscle work. But that got, went, worked out pretty well eventually because we educated ourselves and started doing working with our brains instead and, and got usually more interesting better paid jobs but now we're beginning to replace brain work so we, we replaced a lot of boring stuff like we got the pocket calculator so you don't have people adding multiplying numbers anymore at work fine there were better jobs they could get but now gpt4 you know and the stable diffusion and techniques like this they're really beginning to blow away some real some jobs that people really loved having I, it was a heartbreaking article just post just yesterday on social media i saw about this guy who, who was doing 3d modeling for gaming and he and all of a sudden now they got this new software he just give says prompts and he feels his whole job that he loved just lost its meaning you know and uh i asked uh, gpt4 to rewrite twinkle twinkle little star in the style of shakespeare I couldn't have done such a good job. It was just really impressive. You've seen a lot of the art coming out here, right? So I'm all for automating away the dangerous jobs and the boring jobs. But I, I think um, you hear a lot, some arguments which are too glib. Sometimes people say, well, that's all that's going to happen. We're getting rid of the boring, boring, uh, tedious, dangerous jobs. It's just not true. There are a lot of really interesting jobs that are being taken away now. Journalism is getting going to get crushed. Uh, coding is going to get crushed. I, I predict uh, the job market for programmers, the salaries are going to start dropping. You know, if you said you can code five times faster, you know, then you need five times fewer programmers. Maybe there will be more output also, but you'll still end up using fewer program, needing fewer programmers than today. And I love coding. You know, I, I think it's super cool. Um, so we... we we need to stop and ask ourselves why again are we doing this as humans right i feel that ai should be built by humanity for humanity and let's not forget that it shouldn't be by moloch for moloch or what it really is now is kind of by humanity for moloch which doesn't make any sense it's for us that we're doing it and and um it would make a lot more sense if we build, develop, figure out gradually and safely how to make all this tech. And then we think about what are the kind of jobs that people really don't want to have, you know, and automate them all away. And then we ask, what are the jobs that people really find meaning in? Like maybe taking care of children in the daycare center, maybe doing art, et cetera, et cetera. And, and even if it were possible to automate that way, we don't need to do that, right? It's, we built these machines. Well, it's possible that we redefine 
or rediscover what are the jobs that give us meaning. Yeah. So for me, the thing, it is really sad. Like I, <laughs> half the time I'm excited, half the time I'm uh, crying as I'm, <laughs> as I'm generating code because I kind of love programming. It's uh, yeah. it's the act of creation. You yeah. you have yeah. an idea, you design it, and then you bring it to life, and it does something. Especially yeah. if there's some intelligence to it, it does something. Yeah. It doesn't even have to have intelligence. Printing, printing hello world on screen. You 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 made a little machine, and it it comes to life. Yeah. And uh, there's a bunch of tricks you learn along the way because you've been doing it for for many many years. And then for, to see AI be able to generate all the tricks you thought were special. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's very, uh, it, um, it's, it's scary. Yeah. It's almost painful. Like a loss, a uh, loss of innocence, maybe like yeah. maybe when, when I was younger, uh, I remember before I learned that sugar is bad for you, you should be on a diet. I remember I enjoyed candy deeply in a way I just can't anymore that I know is bad for me. I enjoyed it unapologetically, fully, just intensely, and I just have, I lost that. Now I feel like a little bit of that is lost for me with program or being lost with programming. Mm -hmm. Similar as it is for uh, the the 3D modeler, no longer being able to really enjoy the art of modeling uh, 3D things for gaming. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what to make sense of that. Maybe I would rediscover that the true magic of what it means to be human is connecting with other humans to have conversations like this. I don't know. To uh to have sex, to have to eat food, to really intensify the value from conscious experiences versus like yeah. creating other stuff. You're pitching the rebranding again from Homo sapiens to Homo sapiens, <laughs> Homo sapiens, the, the, yeah. the, the meaningful experiences, and just to inject some optimism in this here, so we don't sound like a bunch of gloomers. <laughs> you know, we can totally have our cake and eat it. You hear a lot of totally bullshit claims that we can't afford having more teachers. Yeah, have to cut the number of nurses. You know, that's just nonsense obviously with anything even quite far short of agi we can dramatically improve grow the gdp and produce this wealth of, of goods and services it's very easy to create a world where everybody is better off than today mm -hmm. including the richest people can be, be better off as well right it's not a zero-sum game you know technology again you can have two countries like Sweden and Denmark had all these ridiculous wars century after century. And uh, sometimes that Sweden got a little better off because it got a little bit bigger and then Denmark got a little bit better off because Sweden got a little bit smaller. And, and But then we then technology came along and we both got just dramatically wealthier without taking away from anyone else. It was just a total win for everyone. And uh, AI can do that on steroids. If you can build safe AGI, if you can build super intelligence, you know, basically all the limitations that cause harm today can be, com can be completely eliminated, right? It's a wonderful you talk, possibility. And this, this is not sci-fi. This is something which is clearly possible according to the laws of physics. And I, we can talk about ways of making it safe also. Um, but unfortunately, that'll only happen if we steer in that direction. That's absolutely not the default outcome. That's, why income inequality keeps going up. That's why the life expectancy in the US has been going down now. I think it's four years in a row. Mm -hmm. I just read a heartbreaking study from uh, the CDC about how something like one third of all teenage girls in the US have been thinking about suicide. You know, like those are steps in the totally the wrong direction. And and it's important to keep our eyes on the prize here that we can we have the power now for the first time in the history of our species to harness artificial intelligence to help us really flourish and help bring out the best in our humanity rather than the worst of it to help us uh, have really fulfilling experiences that feel truly meaningful and and we you and I shouldn't sit here and dictate the future generations what they will be. Let them figure it out, but let's give them a chance to live and, and not foreclose all these possibilities for them by just messing things up, right?